videos here. Yeah. Okay. All right. Next session here is uh, RBD testing overview and strategy. Um, this was something that Josh and a couple other people asked for and thought it might be a good idea just to give a rundown of kind of some of the different testing strategies that are going to go into RBD and uh, given some of the things that are coming up in the roadmap. So, Josh, you want to give an overview of kind of where this was thinking? I know it was coming off of an email chain. So, Yeah, so um, I guess the general thing here was that we have a lot of tests for user space RBD uh, across um, a number of different things. Um, and a few for kernel RBD, they're kind of using different, multiple different frameworks right now. And a lot of that could be unified more. Um, to take advantage of the same tests against both kernel space and user space. And um, just thinking in general about, about uh, what kinds of um, tests we have right now and what kinds of tests we don't have or we're missing and what things we will uh, need to think about um, with testing uh, new features that we've been talking about that are coming up. So, um, I think Ilya had some ideas about um, how to do the uh, kernel space testing or, um, using the same frameworks as RBD as um, user space. Ilya, do you want to talk a little bit about that? Uh, well, the, the the general thing was uh, that, uh, well, like you said, we we, we were lacking uh, kernel tests. And uh, I was thinking about something like uh, like the FSX, uh, uh, which now has uh, both the both the kernel mode and the normal mode, which does the uh, and uh, essentially it runs the same set of uh, operations uh, against either either kernel or the uh, whichever you choose. And uh, I was thinking we should have something uh, like that uh, for uh, for LibRBD, at least IO tests. So uh, everything snapshot cloning and uh, striping related uh, should go into such a framework. And that would be a prerequisite for uh, actually releasing the fancy striping support in the kernel, because otherwise uh, there's really no uh, the one shot testing that uh, develop that, that I would do is, is obviously not sufficient. We want to have it continuous. Uh, You're thinking continuous of like um, a set of functions, and, uh, a, a set of functional tests similar to the Ceph test libRBD that does like create image, delete image, create image, write this thing, read it back, like those sorts of unit type tests. Functional tests. Yeah, and is that what you mean? Uh, but. Uh, so I, it's not the create. So I was thinking more of the uh, corner cases in the in the cloning, uh, overlapping, and etc. So in particular, uh, mm -hmm. the libRBD tests, for example, there is a specific test that tests uh, the the overlap thing, and the kernel had a bug for for almost a year, or actually over a year, uh, where there was uh, the overlap was essentially watched. Uh, so uh, I, I was thinking of writing something like uh, something like similar to FSX uh, to have tests uh, at least those those sort of I/O tests uh, mm -hmm. maintained in one place, and so that the, actually basically the same test of the same set of tests can be run against the libRBD and the kernel RBD right. uh, in in the same mm -hmm. uh, in, in, in the in the similar manner to, to the FSX. That because FSX has been a great help, yeah. uh, we found uh, lots of bugs, and uh, it suggested this approach uh, will benefit us in, in the long run. So, I think I have a lot of those kinds of tests we have for the WebVD right now are actually in the Python tests. There's a bunch of tests for specific like cloning corner cases, and I think there's some discard corner cases, and like a snapshot and resize corner cases too in there. Um, what do you think about like making a kind of a, um, uh, we can make that... a Python we can make a Python bindings uh, for the libkrbd and uh, have a some sort of it, it, it won't actually be that big uh, have a some sort of test driver and uh, basically do, do the same thing that I did for FSX so abstract out the map on map sequences mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. uh, uh, 
introduce Python bindings for libkrbd, actually make it a, a library because right now it's just a static, uh, static set of functions. And um, uh, I, I think that will do it. So uh, I'm not so much interested in, in all the librbd specific stuff because obviously that's... Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's the IO path that's important. Yeah, it's, right. it's the IO path. If if there is something else, we can always uh, bring it in later. But uh, the the core is the IO, and uh, that 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 would be a blocker for merging the fences striping into the kernel. Mm -hmm. So I think the the only other thing that's not that's might be part of the, some of those tests that's uh, libbd specific is the. Um, Changing which snapshot you're reading from or currently writing to, um, um, using, um, while the image is open. But we can probably restructure those tests to avoid that for the other kernel tests. Mm -hmm. the, the the Python tests do that? You mean? Yeah. Um, I see. A few of them do, just to make sure that yeah. that actually works with yeah. like caching enabled and that kind of thing. Um. So, I mean, this would almost be wrapping. Would this? Would we actually wrap the the libarbity Python binding, or would you sort of implement a parallel set of libarbity like bindings that actually open a map and open a kernel device and implement a subset of the functions? Then you would just use that instead. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess think, the easiest. Uh, uh, we we uh, uh, we do the tests to so the tests will have to call some generic function, say write, and then depending on the switch that has been uh, supplied, it either calls libbrbd write or does a p write into a map block device. Mm -hmm. And the same thing for mapping. Uh, so libbrbd mapping is uh, almost an hour up, and for the kernel, we'll have to do all the libkrbd stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, and the simplest way to, to not change the tests would be to implement the same um, interface that the Python bindings for libbrbd implement, but using libkrbd. Um, I think that would be pretty doable. But I don't really see any um, any reason to make it a, a different interface, really. Yep. So I mean that so that'll cover the like specific test cases that the developer sort of dreams up as being potentially problematic and wanting to validate. Mm -hmm. um, FSX is nice because it just throw sort of random stuff and also validates the results. Right. But it's also somewhat limiting in that it's, you know, there's only ever a single IO in flight at a time. It um, is only, is generally using a small piece of the image. Like right. it, it actually keeps an in-memory map of everything that it's written and that's what it's mm -hmm. comparing against. I'm wondering if there are other, other stress test tools out there that also are validating correctness that we might. I, yeah, I guess the biggest one that we have on. been using is actually the XFS tests, um, which do have a lot of different stress type tests in them. That's, yeah, that's um, true. That's true. Yeah. And currently, those are run it with uh, slightly different versions for different for kernel versus user space, and to running them in different environments. Um, might be yeah. nice to unify those more. So that we can have the same set of tests um, against both there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. I think there are might, might be some might be some things that aren't tested tested as well by that, which would be things like um, all snapshots or discard. Um,
Yeah. Well, despite all the things that all the good things that XFS tests do, uh, mm -hmm. in, in in my experience, at least, they turn out to be a lot less uh, useful than 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 the FSX and and the set of uh, mm -hmm. some set of targeted tests. Because even if you get a failure, you generally can't reproduce it, and uh, it's uh, so you you end up chasing. Uh, you don't even know. Sometimes you don't even know right. which test in particular caused the fail. So, for example, the uh, that nasty bug that I was uh, fixing back in January or whatever, it was uh, it was just a pure coincidence that a particular set of tests, a particular like 200 something and then 100 something and so on. So, a particular ordering was causing somewhat reliably the bug to trigger. So. Uh, uh, the, uh, the something something FSX like something FSX like which actually has a reproducible uh, sequ does a reproducible sequence of operations uh, right. is much more uh, useful. Yeah. So perhaps uh, perhaps we can uh, in the long run we can uh, if we can extend that uh, extend the FSX to do something more more parallel and uh, uh so uh, in the short in the short term we need to generalize the python tests uh, uh for fancy striping uh in the long term we can look into parallelizing fsx uh to do more uh what we mm -hmm. need to do because uh, relying just on xfs tests or even finding some other fancy uh testing tool uh, the 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 scenarios that FSX tests uh, are the most the most useful, and uh, I think would be yeah. would provide the most benefit. So. Yeah. There is a version of um, of FSX that uses MPI that we run in the in the file system test suite. It's like MPI FSX, hmm. which I never looked at it closely, but presumably it's it's using a bunch of clients and running FSX. But the backend driver is doing the writes and reads on different clients. It's verifying sort of the coherency between clients. I wonder it might be worth doing on um, on top of kernel RVD. They have multiple multiple kernels mapping the same image and then running. FSX across them. I don't know if that's gonna. I mean, we don't do really do any caching, so it shouldn't turn up much. But who knows? Yeah, that might be uh, something good to run just to verify that it does work for shared disk scenarios. We do something that we don't have to test right now. Yeah. That clearly wouldn't work with libRBD when caching is enabled. <laughs> right. That's okay. Yeah. Um. Okay. So so what about some of these new features that we're thinking about uh, implementing, like the so for the the bitmap stuff it seems like it's going to be pretty straightforward. We can just add, like add that in as an option during the create time, similar to how we treated um, for, format two images, where you can run the same test but either enable or disable, disable bitmaps based on an environment variable um, or something like that. Since those don't actually affect mm -hmm. the operation, they're just an optimization. Um, yeah. I'm sure we'll want to have some targeted tests around those too, though. Um, probably around things like snapshots and making sure that the bitmap associated with the snapshot is consistent. I wonder if we need... Um, like, uh, tests where we're forcibly killing clients? Yeah, I think we'll definitely want that for the mirroring. Um, 
so that we can verify like that journal replay is working correctly and uh, failover works correctly in that kind of case. Or um. I'm getting tired. I can't remember what I was thinking. Um, oh, yeah, having um, having sets of tests that are doing fencing and shutting down clients and taking over locks, fencing the old client, and then picking up where it left off. I think that would, that's probably part of a, a larger strategy to sort of make use of the, the locking mm -hmm. better. Because um, like right now, OpenStack isn't using it at all, right? Right. And then the other sort of cloud things. Oh. It seems like it would be a useful exercise to figure out, have a good, um, you know, like uh, example user or whatever of the locks that sort of, that does it correctly, that mm -hmm. we can point at and say, this is how you... Yeah, I think we have a very basic test for those right now, but it's not doing anything complicated. I mean, for OpenStack, it doesn't matter since that um, it's guaranteeing there's only one accessor by using Cinder's database. Okay, I see. Maybe the um, maybe the iSCSI um, gateways. Like if we do if we do iSCSI gateways with multipath and some like HA thing on the gateways. Because um, mm -hmm. they'll need to do fencing in order to take over. Yeah, that would be. All this kind of That's probably yeah. a place to to introduce That's most that applicable sort of one. Over and, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I think that that still needs sort of a focused effort around. Mm -hmm. Drawing up exactly what the sort of quote unquote right way to do the gateways and failover is. And what the performance is going to look like. Okay. So what about um, journaling and mirroring? Hmm. It's going to be a whole lot of testing around that, I think. Yeah. To make that work. So at the most basic level, we want to test that you know the failover actually works and the journal replay is is consistent and that important. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I wonder if you could, um, <clears throat> like, if you're doing if you're doing writes to the journal and async writes right back from the journal back into the image. Um, mm -hmm. I wonder if the shim underneath FSX could just periodically kill the RBD client and instantiate a new one and trigger a replay and continue. Similar, sort of like yeah. how it's doing clones underneath and flipping over to the new clone. Mm -hmm. So it would actually just be like restarting underneath the covers, and, but making sure that it's still getting. That would be sort of an easy validation just of the of the journal replay component to make sure that the, the journaling is correct on the source. And validating that the client side is correct is a little bit harder. Because it's always a little bit old.
it's getting dark outside. There might be things about um, testing the actual agent that's handling the the replication. Mm-hmm. Um, making sure it, it uh, like killing it and restarting it a bunch uh, doesn't affect uh, correctness. I mean, the most important property is that the 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 thing you're replicating to the target image is a mm -hmm. is like point in time consistent. Right. I wonder if there's a. I guess we we can construct something that's doing like random writes across the device, and every write is writing words that are like one more than the previous. And so you could at any point in time you could a point in time consistent image you could if you could make a scan of the image and validate that it was you know in fact a point in time thing you could probably construct something that writes things in a particular pattern so that you can confirm that that's always true yeah it's just kind of, it's just kind of an optimization for that general case though of uh, writing a bunch of random data and uh, having uh, random failures on both sides, perhaps. And yeah, you just have to, but you have to know that that it's it's correct. Like if you're writing random right. data like FSX does, like you can't just take an FSX image and know that it's correct as of a point in time without having the owning process. But if you have something that's writing a pseudo random sequence that's somehow generating a sequence of events, but whatever. I mean, <clears throat> you'd have to just construct a pattern so that you could just do a like a quick scan over the device and you could know that it's you didn't miss something or whatever. Like it's correct. That'd be a little tricky, but you could probably dream something up. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh... Well, I think in the in the short term we have sort of a a pretty specific set of things to do, right? Yeah. Like Definitely the, doing the Python bindings for that, and that's sort of going to satisfy the immediate and probably along with that. Cleaning up the XFS tests so that we can run the same set of tests inside mm -hmm. the VMs that we're doing on top of the kernel RBD. Um, I think that's going to give us a pretty good coverage. Yeah. Oh, I guess on the on the bitmaps, we could have a simple um, simple verification that um, you look at you load the bitmap and then you just verify that there are no objects that exist that aren't colored in the bitmap. Yeah, just scan the whole image and verify the bitmap matches it, or at least the bitmap is a correct superset of all existing objects. Okay. Okay. Well, should we take a take a little break and then we'll do? Might as well get started on this stuff. Yeah, that sounds good. <laughs>